Hey guys, it's Marshall here again uh, with a new uh, video for the Legends Crafting plugin. It's going to be a walkthrough from start to finish. Um, as you can see, I've got the uh, Legends Crafting plugin ready to go here, so I'm just going to run through the setup uh, program. Uh, these files here are also included um, to make life a little bit uh, easier, well not easier, but uh, you, you have options. Um, you can either choose to run the setup program, which will put the appropriate files in their correct locations, or you could not use the setup at all and just put these in um, their appropriate directories. The DLL files go in the plugins directory, the hack file in the hack directory, and, and so on and so forth. So it's your choice. I'm going to assume you're going to run the setup program and uh, and go from there. It does basically two things, puts these files in the appropriate directories and then it also creates desktop shortcuts for the manual and this uh, Excel spreadsheet here that we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but it's just there for for you to for to help you out. The uh, setup program is just kind of a you know a typical Windows next 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 all the way through. Once you're done that, you just run your tool set. Now the crafting plugin is installed in its correct locations, so you can just fire up uh, fire up the tool set. The crafting system itself is a framework for you to design and implement and use your own uh, trade skills. Not everybody has the same idea of what trade skills should be. You know, some people might like mining, some people might not like mining at all. So rather than force a bunch of trade skills down your throat, this system lets you easily create your own um, your own trade skills and uh, and helps you Im implement them. So we're going to uh, first double check that the crafting plugin is installed, and as you can see, Legends Crafting plugin is installed, and the Master Configurator is installed. Now I've mentioned before that the crafting plugin is really um, useful er, and looks a lot better when you're also using the Legends Info plugin. So, highly, highly recommend that you also install the Legends Info plugin um, to go along with this. Now, there's a you can go download the Info plugin from the Vault, and there's also a walkthrough video already on YouTube uh, on my channel for uh, for the Info plugin. So, have a look at that. You don't actually have to use it or lay any triggers or anything like that. You just have to have it installed. The crafting plugin will leverage it. Uh, if it's installed. So um, really recommend you do that. Now rather than create a brand new module with the typical flat grassy area that I normally do, I, I'm going to spice things up a little bit and make this one look a little bit better. I've created, a, I've got a module all ready to go here. That'll just save me a little bit of work and, and video time. And I'll explain exactly what's in this module so you know I'm not doing anything unusual. Uh, there's a an ERF file on the vault uh, made by Ugly Duck called Mines and Quarry or something similar to that uh, that has these three little fantastic looking areas. So I'm going to use those because they look really good and uh, add a little bit of spice to to this walkthrough, make it look a little bit more interesting than the stupid gray grass fields that I normally do. The second thing that this module has is it already has the info plugin installed on it. So as you can see here, the master scripts are here and the info scripts are here. There's no crafting or anything related to crafting on here. It's just the info plugin already created on this. So um, that's the only two things that are done to it. So we've already confirmed that the crafting plugin is uh, visible and, and in the right location. So the first thing we want to do to this module, or if this was a brand new module, is to import the crafting resources. So we're going to go File and Import. Now in your Neverwinter Nights 2 uh, folder, in typically in My Documents, uh, there's going to be an ERF folder that the setup creates, and in there is going to be the Legcraft ERF file. Uh, as you can see here, I've already installed info, so that one it was already there, but we're going to grab the crafting one on this. And as I've mentioned in previous videos and in the documentation, that if all of my Legends plugins are the same version, I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter if I choose no or yes on this. Uh, if I am installing a newer version of any plugin, I'll always want to select yes. If I'm installing an older version uh, of any plugin on, in a module that has higher versions, I want to select no. I don't want to overwrite. So in this case, it doesn't matter because the info and the crafting plugin are both 1.4. <coughs> so I'm just gonna say yes through this, but the choice was really really up to you. So I've got those installed and now the next thing I want to do is actually configure things. So I need to run my master configurator again 
I ran it once already when I was uh, installing the info plugin. As you can see here, the info plugin is active and my database information is already filled in. Now that I've got the resources for crafting uh, installed, I can activate that. And this field, this area here, is just for my database connectivity because every Legends plugin leverages NWNX and a MySQL database. So even if you don't have access to your production Neverwinter Nights database, go grab the free MySQL server, put it on your computer. You need some kind of development environment for these for these sorts of things. So you just put in your IP and your your port database, username, password, and all that good stuff. Uh, the player prefix tables, this is just to help organize things in the database so that all the tables related to players start with the same kind of prefix so it's easy to spot them. And uh, you can do your little test connect, make sure everything's good, and hit your finish. Now, in any areas that you create uh, with the plugin, uh, with, with most Legends plugins, you know, you need to typically do a um, on-client enter or on-client exit script um, for them. That's what those other buttons for. I'm going to quickly look at those again. That's what these buttons are for here. Update areas, on-client enter, on-client exit, and update module scripts. Most persistent worlds will have something in here already, most likely. And if you do, the, the modification is really simple uh, to an existing script. If you don't have anything in uh, your on client enter events for all your areas or your on client exit for all your areas or your module scripts you can use these buttons to um, actually modify every area in your game in your world to put uh, a legend script in place that will work and now you only want to do these if you don't have a script already if you're not using scripts in all your areas already don't uh, use these but if you do have scripts you uh, you don't want to use these these will overwrite any script will not lose your script but they'll change all your areas to uh, to a different script so you don't want to do that if you have them um, these are useful for module builders who don't have events in there you just click them and it'll just handle all your areas for you so I'm gonna leave these for now until I get everything else configured Next thing I want to do is go into my actual uh, crafting plugin, uh, and we're going to be using this quite a bit throughout this video. So, first thing we're going to do, because this is a brand new module with a brand new installation, we're going to go File and Configure, and we're going to configure the crafting plugin itself. So, here's some default settings that it has. It'll put use these settings if it doesn't find any uh, any settings that you might have configured. So we'll go through what these are real quick. Uh, the minimum learn chance, when the, the idea of crafting in the Legends Craft plugin is that players will learn as they do. So as they practice their trades, they'll actually have chances to learn. Sometimes um, the math uh, states that a person's chance to advance, a person's chance to learn uh, and get better at a craft is so low that they could almost never learn. They'll almost never advance uh, in their crafting skill. So I can be crafting all day long, you know, getting successes all day long, but, you know, the math says I've got a 0.5% chance of actually advancing. Um, this entry here prevents that from happening. So no matter what the math dictates, uh, whenever I succeed in a crafting skill, I'll always have at least a 10% chance to learn, uh, to advance myself. So I can change this to whatever I want. Um, if I want to let the math handle it, I can change this to like 1%. But you have to be careful here because if you put too low of a number in here, the players will advance extremely slowly. Um, you know, they'll they'll have periods inside their um, inside their level where they're you know, learning and learning and learning, and then all of a sudden it slows down almost to a complete halt. Um, this will help prevent that from happening. Maximum learn chance, same idea on the other end of the spectrum. Um, the math can sometimes say that, you know, your chance to learn a new point in, you know, mining or whatever craft we're talking about uh, can be ridiculously high. It could be like 90% chance. So almost every single time you harvest something or craft something, you learn, you advance. And that can be a problem too. You don't want players advancing too quickly. So this will put a cap on that to make sure that no matter what the math states, you only have a, f you have a maximum of 40% chance to learn um, to advance yourself in your, in your craft. Uh, and these two are when a player succeeds in their craft. Now, when a player fails in their craft, what we do is we consider this section a learn.